The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Wednesday service. Would you join me, please? Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory. This we ask through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed are you, the God of our ancestors, worthy to be praised and exalted forever. Blessed is your holy and glorious name, worthy to be praised and exalted forever. Blessed are you in your holy and glorious temple, worthy to be praised and exalted forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths, worthy to be praised and exalted forever. Blessed are you enthroned on the cherubim, worthy to be praised and exalted forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, worthy to be praised and exalted forever. Blessed are you in the heights of heaven, worthy to be praised and exalted forever. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, Everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has made a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. I know that your descendants are of Abraham, yet you look for an opportunity to kill me because there is no place in you for my word. I declare what I have seen in the Father's presence. As for you, you should do what you have heard from the Father. They answered him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would be doing what Abraham did. But now you are trying to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. This is not what Abraham did. You are indeed doing what your father does. They said to him, We are not illegitimate children. We have one father, God himself. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I came from God, and now I am here. I did not come on my own, but he sent me. This is the gospel of Christ. One of the difficult things to get a grip on in this Gospel of John is that the community from which this Gospel sprang is probably a community under persecution. And therefore, there was a clear distinction between those who believed in Jesus Christ and those who didn't. 
And sometimes in this gospel, Jesus sounds almost antagonistic, very angry about this division. I want to say two things about that. The a well-known biblical scholar of a number of years ago, Raymond Brown, wrote a very interesting book called The Community of the Beloved Disciple. And he explains this very well, that because this was a community under persecution, that is the community from which John's gospel came, there was a tendency to look at all the world as being bad, except them. And you know, that's exactly what persecuted groups do. They tend to isolate, self-justify, and look at the rest of the world as being evil. We need to keep that in mind, I think, when we're reading from John's Gospel, because it, it informs us about the background of some of these rather divisive things. On the other hand, it's also true that God, particularly the God that is given to us, or at least portrayed to us in the Hebrew Bible, is a God that gets angry. And I don't blame Jesus for getting angry at people who seem to ignore the gospel message, even when the bringer of the gospel message is standing right in front of them. Now, where does that leave us in all of this? Well, first of all, we need to be careful about being angry. Judgment belongs to God. And secondly, we are all children of God. Whether you believe in Jesus Christ or not does not change that fact. Believing in Jesus Christ should change your life, change your attitudes, change the way you think about things. But it does not change who you are fundamentally as a child of God. And sometimes within the family, it's a good idea not to have certain discussions to avoid the fight. It's our job as Christians, yes, to live the gospel message, to proclaim it, and to try and bring people together. But it's not our job to force people. We have to live them into believing rather than grind them into believing. And as I've often said to people, Christianity is not a weapon. It should not be used against anyone. It is a goodness in the world, not a problem in the world, and that's the way we should keep it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Father, on this day we pray for all those who have been affected by COVID-19. Pray for families who have experienced loss wherever they are in the world. We pray also for medical teams in this country and all over the world who are working on solutions to this problem. We pray for ourselves. Pray for those who are anxious about this. Walk with them. Give them your love. We pray for those who are worried about this and perhaps are not sleeping well. Walk with them. And Holy Spirit, we ask your guidance in what we are doing and how we are living so that we might lessen that blip in the COVID-19 ramp. Help us all to understand that we need to keep isolated from each other to stop this from moving between us. Give us the strength to do that. Holy Spirit, walk with us in these things. We pray for our leaders, for Bishop Susan, for all the leaders in the Anglican Church. We pray for clergy who are wearing out phone lines all over the country. We pray for those who are struggling, trying to figure out how to use Zoom and new electronic devices. We pray that in all these things, you will indeed walk with us. And gracious God, you have heard our prayers and as so often you know our needs even before we ask. We ask that you grant our prayers 
and petitions as may be best for us, giving us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the life to come and eternity with your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Would you join me, please, in the words that Jesus taught his disciples? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Christ Jesus our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you this day and remain among us always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>